How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Also do me the biggest favor of all, hit the bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on my channel. In this video we are going to be continuing on reading through my book series. This is going to be for the Chronicles of Una 4 8, Quest for the Ruby Gunship. If you guys want a copy of this, please let me know in the comments section. I will send you guys via an email a link of a micro Microsoft Word document of this book if you guys want to read this on your own time or read it along with me as I'm reading it through this book uh, video. And um, so we're done with Delta Force, we're moving on, continuing on with the Chronicles of the Unifor series. Of course Delta Force is part of the Unifor series, but it's kind of like its own little gig. Um, so this is going to be continuing on through the main Unifor storyline, um, characters that we've been seeing from Chronicles of Unifor 1 through 7 um, that are still alive. They're going to be showing up in this book and, of course, continuing on with 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Um, main characters that were in Delta Force that really didn't get a lot of screen time, if you want to call it like that, are going to show up again in here. And threads and whatnot that you may have not understood in the Delta Force book, they're going to start making a lot more sense in this book, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And, of course, with the final war. So, I appreciate all your guys' love and support support for this channel also we are at 89 subscribers at the time we recording this video and um, if you guys haven't I highly encourage you guys to do so make sure to head over to twitch as well and follow me at douglas447 it's got a detective pikachu picture and that's douglas447 with a capital d on twitch I stream there basically every other day so I highly encourage you guys to do so it's completely free to follow me there you guys do not have to pay me anything if you don't want to there is an option to spend five dollars to help support me financially on my twitch channel and of course to help me here on my youtube channel if you guys are interested in that and uh with that i hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh enjoy the adventure continues as unifor and some old allies journey to yon 4 to build a core base bad news arrives from jesus that another evil leader has risen Informed of the only items that can defeat this threat, Unifor sets out into the universe to locate a special ruby last seen on a gunship. But the only problem is that the planet the gunship crashed on is filled with T-Rexes and Raptors. Can the team stay alive, find the ruby, and return to the Yon 4? Find out. Chapter 1. The Bad News. Year 4444. 2,416 years after Satan's second defeat. Location, Uncharted Space, New Heaven. I have summoned each of you to inform you all of something, said Jesus, to a crowd of, cro of, cor to a crowd of core forces. My father has brought back to life those killed in the last war and has also recreated the planets that were destroyed by Vader's weapon, said Jesus. Your mission is to build ships and fighters, travel to Yon 4, and wait for further instructions, said Jesus. Lastly, my father has given the title of High Commander of the Corps to Douglas Armstrong and Second Commander to General Ultimate, said Jesus. Unifor still consisted of Douglas, Devon, Deborah, and Dave Armstrong, each with their own lightsaber. Unifor began construction of their own special ship called the DAS-44, the DAAS which stands for Determined Alliance Assault Ship with energy engines plus 44 cannons. Several hours later, Unifor and the rest of the Corps finished building their army and blasted out of uncharted space and into Sector 10. Location, the DAAS-44. All generals report in, said Douglas. These are the generals that were part of the Corps. General Ultimate, General Array, General Abbey, General Baron, Tree General Rosh, Droid General Ace, and Hamster General Billy. Douglas, we have just entered Sector 7, said Devon, Douglas's younger brother. Yon 4 is a few minutes away, said Deborah. It has been too long since we have seen this planet, said Dave. Douglas, this is Ash Becca. I have a strange feeling about this mission, said Ash. Don't worry, Ash. You have to remember that there can't be any evil on a core planet, said Douglas. Yes, but it has been years since the last war. So, some form of evil could be on this planet, said Ash. Four minutes later. The core fleet landed around the town that Henry once lived in. General Ultimate, I want this town to be turned into the Corps' main base of operations, said Douglas, still on the DAAS-44. 
Douglas, we have a problem. Six teleporting spinosaurus have entered the town and are eating anything that moves, said a core troop on an earpiece before being eaten by a spinosaurus himself. Devin, land us quickly. Mom, tell the core fleet to load up on blast rifles before landing, and Dad, get out our weapons from the armory, said Douglas, before the DAAS-44 landed on the planet. The team stepped out of their ship with Douglas and his green lightsaber. I'm sorry, with Douglas with his green lightsaber, Deborah with her purple lightsaber, Dave with his blue lightsaber, and Devin with his golden lightsaber, to see that none of the Spinosaurus had been killed by the core forces. Devin, come with me. Mom and Dad, help the core until we return, said Douglas. Zoom! Douglas and Devin had disappeared because Douglas still had his teleporting powers. Charge, said Dave, leading the way towards the Spinosaurus with Deborah, General Ultimate Ash Becca, and others behind him. Dave and Deborah jumped onto one of the six teleporting Spinosaurus and chopped off its head, while core forces distracted it. Zoom! Douglas and Devin had returned, but were inside of the ARC-170 armored jeep. Let's kill these things, said Douglas, driving the jeep with Devin holding onto one of the mounted machine guns. Douglas teleported the ARC-170 and placed Devin's gun barrel right in front of the Spinosaurus' brain. Within ten seconds, four more Spinosaurus were dead. Douglas, I'm out of ammo, said Devin. Look out, said Ash, Becca. Douglas and Devin looked up to see the remaining Spinosaurus charging towards them. Douglas teleported out of the Ark 170 and onto the Spinosaurus, driving his green lightsaber into the Spinosaurus's head and teleporting back to Ark 170's driving seat. The body of the Spinosaurus collapsed to the ground. General Ultimate, begin, begin construction of the core base, including a stronger perimeter fence to keep those monsters out of our way, said Douglas, still inside of the Ark 170, before driving to, to, before driving to Henry's old house. Along the way, Douglas picked up Deborah and Dave so that they didn't have to walk so far to reach their base, Henry's house. Location, New Heaven. My son, go now and tell them all the bad news about him, and what Unifor's quest is to save us all, said God to Jesus. Jesus boarded a core ship and blasted towards Yon 4. Location, Yon 4. Hangar bays, radar towers, missile and laser towers, perimeter fencing, and armory, shelters, and more has been finished, said General Ultimate to General Douglas inside of Unifor's base. Great job, General. Now we wait for further instructions, said Douglas. Generals. Jesus has just arrived, said General Abbey of Cassando inside of the doorway. Unifor and General Ultimate left the base, walked outside, and saw Jesus, with a scroll in his left hand, talking to General Ray of Yon 4 and Droid General Ace of C7S6. Unifor and General Ultimate walked towards Jesus, unaware of the bad news that awaited them. Chapter 2 The Red Moth Jesus, what brings you out of uncharted space, or Sector 1, asked Douglas. I have bad news, said Jesus. Okay, go on, said Douglas. My father believes that though we fought and won the last war, it was only the last war against Satan, but not evil, said Jesus. What is evil up to now, asked General Ultimate. My father hasn't told me much about evil's plans, or who is the new villain and leader of the arm, said Jesus. Take the scroll and read it out loud, said Jesus, passing the scroll to Ashbeka. This is what the scroll said. Greetings to you all. You must wonder why I sent the core to Yon 4, and the reason is as follows. Evil has returned in the form of a man named Nikolai Sith. He plans, I'm sorry, his plans are uncertain, but we do know one thing for sure. Nikolai plans to conquer the universe, including No Man's Land and the Uncharted Space. The course mission is to aid Unit 4 while the team locates 10 special items. These items are scattered throughout the universe, and the location of each will be told on separate messages. You already have one of the 10 items, and it is the Golden Lightsaber. If the Corps has all 10 of these items, it will allow Nikolai to become weak. Coordinates for your quest to locate a special ruby last recorded on board a gunship called the Red Moth is the following. Sector 11, southwest, southwest of Sekton Las, west of Kun, and northwest of the zone. Good luck to you all. God. This is all true. Evil still remains in the universe, said Jesus. 
I just checked the, tor the coordinates that God gave us, said Dave, with a small machine in his hands. Where's the red moth? asked Douglas. This must be a mistake, said Dave. What's wrong? asked Debra. Come on already! What is it? said Devin. Troy, I dad. That's the planet the red moth was last seen, said Dave. What's wrong with Troy, I dad? It's just a forest planet, said Debra. I'm afraid it's more than that. It was an arm controlled planet during the ice war against Dr. Ice and the last war against Satan, said Douglas. So, what does that have to do years later? asked Debra. The monsters that roam, that, that roam, the monsters that roam, Troy I Dad, still exist, said Devon. What monsters are we talking about? asked Debra. Ones that are thought to be extinct, said Douglas. Well then, Jesus, thank you for delivering that message, said General Ultimate. Are you going to accept the mission to save the universe one last time? asked Jesus. All the Corps generals and uniform members looked at Douglas, awaiting his response. The, the, the quest for the Ruby gunship begins now, said Douglas. Unifor dashed into their base, grabbed their lightsabers and blaster rifles, placed the Arc 170 inside of the DAAS-44, and blasted into space. I hope their quest goes well, said Hamster General Billy. Don't worry about them. They are Unifor, said Jesus, before leaving Yon 4 and returning to New Heaven. Location, the DAAS-44. Douglas, we have just entered Sector 8 and will arrive in Sector 11 in a few hours, said Devon, seeing the planets Tom Bomb and Trick in to the right and Zone to the left. Location, New Heaven. Father, Unifor and the Corps have accepted the mission and the team is on their way to Triadad, said Jesus to God, which was on his throne. I know this is, I know this, my son, said God. What are the ten special items that Unifor must locate on their quest, asked Jesus. You will know in good time, my son, replied God. Location, the DAAS-44. Douglas, we have just passed, passed, blah, 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 passed the planet Sekton Loss, and Troy, Dad, is two minutes away, said Devin, which was in his room sleeping on the speaker system. Thank you, Devin. Sorry, uh, no, that's wrong. Thank you. Devin, call Mom and Dad from the armory to tell them to grab our weapons and prepare the Arkham 70 to travel, to, to travel, said Douglas over the speaker system. Yes, sir, replied Devin. Two minutes later. Douglas, I'm landing the DAAS-44 on Troy Dad now, said Devin, which was on the command bridge over the speaker system. Check for possible gases that may be lethal to us, said Douglas, inside of the ARC-170, along with Dave and Deborah. Checking for lethal gases. What's this, said Devin. What's up, Devin, asked Douglas. There are fumes out there. I guess this planet requires these certain gases to keep these monsters alive, said Devon. Where are the oxygen levels out there? Ugh. Where are the oxygen levels out there? I mean, you know, we would like to get going, said Dave, loudly. Not so loud, said Deborah. Thank you, Mom, said Douglas. Hey, guys, there's only 4% oxygen, and the rest is carbon monoxide, said Devon, sitting down inside the Ark 170 with four gas masks. What are you waiting for, Dad? asked Douglas. Unifor put on the mask, opened the door containing the Ark 170, and took to the forest. Dad, drive carefully. Mom and Devin, keep your eyes peeled for anything weird with those machine guns of yours, and I'll use the 20 LC to track down the red moth, said Douglas. I hope your 20 LC, 20 mile scanner locator, can spot incoming monsters, said Deborah. Hey guys, I have something on the 20 LC, said Douglas. Is it moving, asked Dave. Can't tell while well, we're moving also, said Douglas. Dave put the Arkham 70 in brake and prepared to drive away if it was a monster on the 20 LC. The object isn't moving, said Douglas. It must be the Red Moth, said Devin. Dad, drive northwest for about 10 minutes, said Douglas. Dave put the Arkham 70 into drive and began the journey into the dense forest, not knowing not knowing the danger that was closing in around them. Location, Yon 4. General Ultimate, we have just received word that Unifor has safely arrived on Triadad and on their way to the Red Moth, even as we speak, said Tree General Rosh. Thank you, Rosh, replied General Ultimate. Location, Triadad. Dad, stop the jeep, said Douglas. The team had arrived at the object on the 20LC and realized that it had led them to a red-colored ship, the Red Moth. 
Let's get the ruby and get out of here before a monster finds us, said Douglas. Unifor stepped out of the Ark 170. Let's try that again. Unifor stepped out of the Ark 170 and entered the Red Moth through a hole in the side of the gunship. Keep the blaster up. Keep it keep, keep your blaster rifles handy. Looks like something tore through the ship, said Dave. The question I have is what's the thing that tore the ship on board or on the outside of the ship when it crashed, said Deborah. Hey guys, I found the control room, said Devin. The team looked to see the two pilots dead, including the fact that their hands and hearts were missing. Douglas, I have found a note, said Dave. What is the note? I'm sorry, this is what the This is what the note said. For those seeking a ruby, come to Thin Line in Sector 2 to claim it. The caller, Toa. Who is Toa? asked Devin. I don't know, but the ruby isn't on this ship, said Dave. Sounds like this Toa person knew we were coming and is calling us to him, said Deborah. We have no choice but to trust the note, said Douglas. The team left the Red Moth, entered the Hark 170, and heard the sound of the 20 LC going crazy. What's going on with the 20 LC? asked Deborah. Douglas looked at the 20 LC and around the forest to realize a pack of monsters were coming towards them. Get this jeep moving on! Get this jeep moving towards the DAA S44! We have two T Rexes and ten Raptors surrounding us, said Douglas. Roar! Dave put the Argon 70 into drive and Devin and Deborah began blasting at the monsters. Move this jeep faster, said Douglas to Dave. Douglas, we've killed all the raptors, but the two T-Rexes are still on our tail, said Devin. Douglas, we have made it to the DAAS-44, said Dave. Roar! Keep those monsters off of our tail, said Douglas to his mother and brother. Oh no! Not now, said Dave. What's wrong? asked Douglas. The Ark 170 is out of fuel, said Dave. Douglas looked at the fuel level and realized they wouldn't make it to the DAAS-44 with the two T-Rexes on their backside. Douglas, we're running out of bullets, said Devin. Smash! One of the T-Rexes had flipped the Ark 170 upside down. Get out, said Deborah. No, stay put, said Douglas. Douglas, we can't stay here, yet we can't escape, said Dave. Everyone, stay where you are, said Douglas. Zoom, zoom. Douglas had teleported the team on the DAAS 44's command bridge. Where's the Ark 170, asked Deborah. I had to leave it on Troy, I dad, or else I would have teleported the T-Rexes into the ship, said Douglas. Where are we, asked Devin, looking out of a glass window. We are in no man's land, and we are about to enter Thin Line's atmosphere, said Douglas. Alright guys, I'm going to end the video here. Um, I'm going to do a part two, which will conclude the book, and we will finish the last two and a half pages in part two, coming out very soon. You guys all have a phenomenal day, and I will see you guys in the next video or stream.